Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to our next session in the Salta in the Salta room tonight, or this morning or afternoon, depending where from where you're watching. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Matthew Travis. He's from uh, he's a consultant, geospatial consultant at Aston Technology, a UK-based company um, with a long, you know, with a long, um, long-term commitment to the phosphor ecosystem and uh, doing some great work and having a lot of members within the community and uh, yeah Matthew thanks, is for the in <laughs> thanks for the introduction my company would be very happy <laughs> well it's it's my it's my pleasure and you Matthew you also contribute more than just code and presentation you're also involved in us on um, the local chapter the UK local chapter and you're doing a lot of work there so uh, thank you and make everyone fall in line in love with the command line for deploying QGIS. Okay. You have the floor. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for the introduction, Kadrina. Uh, saved me quite a bit of time. Uh, well, yeah, this talk's uh, command line QGIS. Uh, I'm Matt Travis, also on, on Twitter as Yakus. So you might know me from there. Um, Okay, introduction. Uh, as Katrina kindly gave us an introduction as to that technology, we're a UK based SME uh, specializing in geospatial consultancy, but also uh, software training. And uh, we do all kinds of things from geo server to QGIS training and an awful lot of metadata these days, as um, my colleague Joe has been showing throughout the conference. Um, as Katrina said, I'm also quite active in OSGEO UK and I've in the past been involved quite heavily with the QGIS user group in the UK. Um, that's kind of um, been a bit quiet recently, but hopefully we can get that back up and running soon. It'll be good to see everyone again. Uh, so why command line? So since I started Aston, I've been using the command line a lot more than I ever did really. and. It's just the simplicity, yet yeah, the power of the command line that it's kind of drawn me to looking at ways you can do that within QGIS. Um, so I thought I'd bring that together in this talk today. Uh, so it's a good point of reference for me in the future and for others, hopefully. So why command line? So uh, it's good for repetitive tasks. Potential uses uh, less memory CPU, especially with QGIS. Um, uh, can be scripted for automation in Bash, PowerShell, and even good old DOS. Uh, so I'm just going to go through the different options that are available within QGIS uh, via the command line. So we've got installing options, uh, startup options, and uh, processing toolbox. So that's processing options. So start off with uh, installing options. So you can install QGIS I suppose I'm talking mainly on Windows here because the scripting that we, we worked on was for Windows deployment. Um, obviously, QGIS, you can install on any distribution. Uh, sorry, lots of different platforms, including, including Mac now quite easily. Uh, but to install QGIS on Windows, you can use a QGIS standalone installer, uh, OSG for W installer, which we're going to talk about more in that moment. And also more recently, um, Come across Conda, which is a great way of installing QGIS um, using virtual environments, and, and that gives you the option to install QGIS, uh, different versions of QGIS for, for testing, which is really useful. Uh, so, OSG for W installer options. Um, as far as I know, it's Windows only. Uh, you access it by the OSG for W shell, and obviously, you guys can't see this photo list here, but my benefit i'm just going to click on that and this uh, url up here which i will be sharing later on in, in, in a document at the end you, you can grab that and have a look yourself and see what the options are I, I hadn't come across these until very recently and there's some really good options in terms of making the whole process automated and uh, so a user doesn't effectively need to be there clicking through the various windows and acceptance and and things that happen when you're, you're trying to install QGIS via OSG or 4W. So let's go back to talk. 
so the different options are available um you've got quiet mode so that's uh, essentially unattended setup so you don't have to click yes for it um auto accept which is accepting all licenses that QGIS uh, and, and other packages use and uh, you can specify the actual package to use so if you want QGIS LTR you can specify that if you want the dev version you, you can specify that and um the these scripts uh, sorry these options have been uh, combined in a script i found uh, by, by julian moore which um we can quickly look at here and what this essentially does is, is download this is a powershell script so this downloads um the osgeo xe for you and then um it, it run it runs the exe but with different options so you've got auto accept as we talked about um advanced so that's telling it to use the advanced not the, the basic one which just gives you QGIS and uh, no desktop so no desktop packages at the end and in quiet mode so all that can, can be, be com combined into the script and i've actually tested this out before so if i just yeah. If I just set that running now, we're not gonna we're not gonna sit here and, and watch that, but just wanted to just show you what it does briefly and, and then we can come back to it and see that it has actually installed QGIS um, quite quickly. So you, you could set this to run overnight on, on, on a server, well on a on a virtual machine or at startup, and, and then you could get the, the flow of QGIS, the most up to date LTR that, that you needed. So as you can as you can see that's really really useful script there so um while that's running we'll, we'll come back to that at the end i think um while that's running we'll just go through the startup options so startup options so uh, they're good for doing mul multiple things at startup and qgis um some users might only have one project they ever use um, one reason they only really have to open qgis for um, that's a shame. Uh, it'd be good if they, you know, once or another, could get to use QGIS a bit more and realise it, it's a really, really good tool. Uh, but some users literally only have one, open one project, so startup options allows us to, to do that. So, uh, the options can be used in properties of desktop icons, uh, so the shortcuts, uh, and or can be used to call QGIS from another program, uh, like an access database. I mean, that's not something that you know, we'd think talk about the fossil gene necessarily but in the real world do people still do use access databases so, uh unfortunately <laughs> Pro probably few and far between but it still happens um so startup options um on linux um they can be accessed the list that's available can be accessed using this command here uh or qgis ltr bin xe help so I'll just quickly jump over to it terminal window if i just clear up so i'm in a bit of a live demo here hopefully you can see all that um yeah so just at the top so these are all the options that are available They're also available on the key in the stock so i'm going to share that at the end so there's things like display version, um, no logo, so hide the splash screen, no plugins, so you can hit Q to start and, and just don't restore the plugins. So um, no customization, so there's no particular GUI customization. Um, code path, which um, you can run a given Python script at the start, uh, and project as well, which will, will set it to load a particular project. There's also uh, an option for profile name, so you can load a given profile. This is particularly useful if you have um, a set of users, such as, say, planners or archaeologists uh, within an organization, you know, many others you can think of, but um, they could have a particular profile that um, has, a, has a set of uh, plugins, has uh, particular settings that they use, and you, you could uh, apply that at, at startup. So that, that's a particularly useful option there. There's also options to, which are newer, ones I've not come across before, to export to DXF. 
Um, some, I've always struggled with QGIS, so I'll have to give it a go at some point. Um, yeah, as you can see, there's, there's quite a lot of options there. So um, I picked together a little, a little example there. So if I just I'll open up this, you can see that okay. So this is this is um, loading QGIS with no plugins, no logo. Um, no version check, etc. It hides the browser, it loads up a particular project and runs some code at the beginning. So just gonna show you guys what happens when you run that. Unfortunately, I think it's gonna queue just in a separate screen. So I'm sorry, that's a different one. <laughs> Let's try it, see what happens. No, no, it's done it brilliant. Okay, so what that's done. Let's open up QGIS very, very quickly. As you can see, um, it's open up a particular project and it's open up attribute table. Now, the reason it's open up the attribute table and zoom to somewhere is because I've used um, the, the code option and I'm using this, this Python script here called sh show table zoom, um, which essentially just uses some uh, PyQGIS to zoom, uh, select. California, zoom to that boundary. So it, this just gives you uh, kind of like a basic flavor, uh, an idea of, of what's possible using startup options. So I'll just show you that. Okay, and let's come off that now. Let's come off that. Sorry guys, there you go. Okay, so yeah, so the final set of options, um, uh, the process and toolbox options. So these access um, or essentially all the processes within QGIS that you see within the process and toolbox uh, and also models and the scripts. So um, there you go, it says access in, so access in process and algorithms and models and without starting QGIS desktop itself, which effect, essentially is, is the is very useful. So um, to see all these processes, you can use QGIS process list. And there's a full set of commands here within the docs. So you can also see available plugins that um, used by processing. You can have help here. So you, you find a list, you list the processes, and then you can run help to against a specific process. So I'll just show you that in a moment. Um, these are standard QGIS docs. Um, this has been available since QGIS 3.14, I believe. Um, is that by Noel Dawson? So thanks, Noel. Um, so what we'll do is just jump back to the presentation. Oh, that's some so. Okay, so I've, I've already used just process list here and um, some old command line stuff to just use grep with buffer just to get an idea of the processes the buffer processes that are available in QGIS so you can you can just use QGIS process list that will list everything but it's quite extensive it brings up every single process so if you just want to find the buffer ones you can use grep buffer if you're on Windows you know window uh, Windows subsystem for, for Linux you can you can hopefully use grep, grep there as well to do that it's just a nice way of, of seeing seeing all the buffer, well, seeing particular uh, process that you want. Um, and from there, so I've already taken the previous live demo there, I was worried about. There you go, so what that's done is it's, it's given us um, a list of the arguments that are available. The, these are the arguments that you would see in the GUI within QGIS desktop when you used it, but it's just it's just open to, to here, so we can try, try and use them here. So you've got input distance. Okay, so then if I try just running that one, just, um, you, can't, you can't just run it, you need uh, essentially an input and output. 
so I've already got one of those from earlier. Sorry about that. So if the input is, uh, I'll just quickly jump to QGIS actually and show you. The input is this Burns data, it's uh, based on uh, Burns data I've got from Dalton National Park. Uh, my previous employee, so uh, that date is open, openly available. Um, it's, it's basically what has been burns on Dartmoor over the last 10 years, I think. That's so all amalgamated into one layer. Um, so I've just used this, that one in this example. So the input is the burns geo package, uh, output is burns geo package. And there we go. And Obviously, you're not going to get a buffer if you don't put a distance in, so we'll just put distance equals 100. And you get your processor, like you get an OGR to OGR. That's quite nice. And then if we go to QGIS, and you can actually see that balance buffer is there. And the buffer. Um, but what it hasn't done is dissolved it, so it's you get lots of long ones on top of each other, which doesn't look particularly great. So we can just jump back into the command line and say dissolve. We can do one for yes, but we can just also do why I think. That should overwrite the current one. I'll remove that one. Hopefully this will work. Yeah, there you go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so that's buffer. Uh, that's buffer, but dissolved as well. So that's a. Uh, there's lots of options there. Um, Show you the sorry, show you the list. Sensor list. You can also uh, call scripts. If you create a script, there's one here called create mass that I've, I've used for something else. Um, also, if you have models, you can create models. I think there'll be uh, core models as well. So uh, that's if you use QGIS modeler, the graphical modeler to build one. Um, you can also use this QGIS process to call those. That, that's really useful. Um, it just gives you an idea of how many different ones there are, literally, the 200 access and everything within the process in the box. So that's probably the most powerful uh, command option I've, I've found. I mean, the install is good as well, uh, but but this is really good. I mean, effectively, you could set, set this up to run overnight. Um, it's almost like FME server, something similar to that. Really powerful, yeah, free, so great. Um, so still got quite a bit of time um i'm almost there unfortunately so I, what we'll do is just jump back to that virtual machine and so the, this script now this is the installer script um, set up set to run earlier and, and that's uh, that's done the work so it's downloaded over studio 4w installer and uh, it's it's done and then start installing it and hopefully If we look at the C drive, there should be no. Yeah, OS 4 4 w has been added, and QGIS should be here. You have to take my word for it. I should have shown you that it wasn't there before. <laughs> but it, it wasn't. Uh, so hopefully it opens as well. There you go. So yeah, um, a really simple, easy script to deploy via PowerShell. Um, so if, if you're using, if you want to deploy QGIS across your enterprise in your, in your Windows base, which I imagine most most uh, large companies are, um, this is a really good way to do that. And the script's really useful and powerful, and I'm surprised I've not come across it before. So I'm, I'm glad to be able to share it. Um, but yeah, so let's go back to the top. So, yeah, so in summary. Uh, there's lots of op different options available to use. Um, I've collected them here in, in this GitHub readme I've created. Uh, 
so install options, startup options. Uh, there's a few more I need to add to these, and I'll add the script, etc. But uh, yeah, that's uh, for anyone to use. And if there's other things that command line related for QGIS and you not be useful, then please add to it. And just you know, give me a show if you want to talk about this kind of thing. Um, so, oh, sorry. I lost the window now. This is the problem with <laughs> too many demos. Ah, here we go. Stuck in a loop, guys. Sorry, this. <laughs> we could be taking some questions because your presentation is. Uh, yeah. Something's so <laughs> until, it, until, it, until it comes back. Uh, yeah, it's frozen so, up. Sorry about that. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> One must always appreciate a live demo. I can I can say that yeah. <laughs> fully <Yeah>. hard itself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just uh, run uh, to the questions and I'll take the one with the most votes. So, is it possible to install QGIS via command line with plugins directly? So, yes, you what, via command line via DOS. Yes, you can essentially because. You need no. You need the plugins to start with, so you actually need the folders, uh, you know, exist in some way. So, if there's someone on your network drive uh, in a central place, then you could copy them across using PowerShell or, or another another method like um, a command line DOS or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, essentially, is as long as you've downloaded the plugins previously, yeah, and, and then you just put them into the central plugins folder. Uh, for each user, so it is possible. But then you need you need to also make sure they're activated, which I think you can do via command line. <laughs> Whoever's asked that question, please get in touch. <laughs> okay, uh, next one. So with the command line or with Conda, we could make an ETL as FME server if embedded in Apache Air or other. Apache Air, yeah, um, I've not used that myself. Um, yeah, essentially you could, I guess, because the processing you can run via a script, any you know, uh, a bash script. Uh, so you, you could use in Conda uh, as well. Or I'm, I'm not thought about that too deeply myself, but I, I, I'd imagine it's possible. That's the answer. <laughs> Okay, going to the next one with many votes. Giving the uh, giving the Python script, can one run QGIS so that at the end it generates a PNG file of a map? If the answer is yes, I don't need the details as to how. Sorry, so can you repeat that one? Yeah. So, um, giving the Python script, can one run QGIS so that at the end it generates a PNG file of a map? Uh, yes, is the answer, because you could do all that via Python, um, so you could export PNG, but you'd have to know the exact um, PyQGIS, you know, the Q QGIS API, Python API, uh, to do that. But yeah, that's definitely possible. Yeah. Okay. The next yeah, one. Yeah. Useful. Okay. Next one. Would you recommend to use QGIS from the command line interface for chaining tools together or better use the Python interface? Um, sorry, can you repeat it? I didn't quite understand the first the second. 
Uh, do you recommend you use uh, the command line uh, to use QGIS from command line to chain tools together or just to use the Python uh, interface? Uh, I'm not quite sure what they mean there. The Python interface, so the Python interpreter to use QGIS API, uh, use PyQGIS. Yeah, you, you could do that. You could do that just as easily. Um, it's just, I suppose, with the processing, it's just a different way of accessing tools that are already there, without having to know the QGIS API, which can put a lot of a, um, a lot of people off. You know, if if they haven't got a background in in, in Python or, or um, C C plus plus, um, just accessing processing and you get all the information there um, is is a lot easier, I'd say. Okay. Next one, a lot of votes. Is it possible to upgrade QGIS with new WFS or WMS services in profile or other way in the Explorer without override custom services added by user before? Could you paste that one in there? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I already did it. Oh, you've already done that? OK. Uh, yeah. Is it Upgrade QGIS with new. So, in terms of upgrading QGIS, uh, you wouldn't do that in the profile. So, any new WFS functionality or uh, WMS services that are available, I might have misunderstood the question, but anything like that would, that's in a new version of QGIS, you, you would get with a new version of QGIS. So, that would be done via installing. So, if you're on Linux, you would just upgrade and update. Uh, and get new QGIS if you were deploying it across uh, a network. Um, in PowerShell, you would just point to the, the QGIS LTR um, in, using OSGO 4W. But um, yeah, override custom services. I'm not really sure what that means, unfortunately. But yeah, please get in touch if, um, if you want to explore that more. Next one is QGIS process also available on a U on a Windows PowerShell. Good question. Um, it should be if you access the the bin folder, the because um, QGIS QGIS help is available. The startup options are available via. PowerShell, so QGIS process should be, it's also available on Windows, it should be available on PowerShell, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll take two more questions. Can you use the command line install with the standalone installer? You, uh, not the options that I showed you, uh, because that's specifically OSGO 4W. Uh, with the if you use the standalone installer there's there is a silent option which is useful uh there's a silent flag which you can use but that's just like a standard xe thing within command uh, command line and windows um yeah so it's very limited unfortunately so rsg rsg 4 w is the way to go Okay, and one last question. In QGIS process, do you get error report better or worse? Error reporting than if you run processing interactively? I'm also copy pasting the question. Um, I'd imagine it would be exactly the same. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that one. Um, because essentially you're just you're just using the, the same process in uh, process in what, what's in the GUI, um, but yeah. Sorry, I don't know the answer. So I've not had many errors myself <laughs> using the using the um, command line option. So. Okay, so our time is up. So thank you very much, Matt, for your no presentation, worries. Thanks answering very much. All your questions and. Enjoy Phosphor G, right? Oh, you too. Thanks Thank very you. much for your time. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 So we have one more uh, presentation, uh, but um, fortunately, I see that the uh, presenter has not yet joined StreamYard. 
So uh, we'll be waiting for him, I guess.